2020 is certainly a year for the history books, in many cases, for all the wrong reasons. But tomorrow has the potential to be a monumental moment, a new era in spaceflight. Weather permitting, we could see two astronauts lift off from American soil for the first time in nearly a decade, this time aboard a privately owned and operated spaceship. And if you can imagine, space launches are difficult under the best of circumstances. Now imagine the risks during a pandemic, a stork launch with renewed meaning during this tumultuous time. Our Clayton Sandell leads us off. A mission and lift off of the Falcon 9 to the space station on the first commercial launch from Kennedy Space Center's historic Pad 39A. In 2020, the race to space is more crowded than ever. Rocket ships and space stations, humans and robots, governments and billionaires, all reaching for the stars. Echoing fierce competitions of the past. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. But today, space isn't just for global superpowers. It's also the pursuit of the super rich. Together, we can make space accessible in a way that has only been dreamt of before now. On Launchpad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral, Florida, America's newest chapter in space is ready to blast off. Here, SpaceX, the company founded by Tesla CEO Elon Musk, plans to launch its Dragon space capsule with two NASA astronauts inside. Three, two, one. The mission's goal is to demonstrate that a private company like SpaceX can deliver astronauts to the International Space Station and get them home safely. NASA astronauts Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley will be on board. I think continuing to push into space challenges us as Americans, challenges us as scientists and engineers, and I think that that continued push uh, uh, is important. If the mission succeeds, American astronauts will not only be free of Earth's gravity, for the first time in nearly a decade, they'll be free from paying Russia for a ticket to space. Hurley now deploying the drag chute. The space shuttle pulls into port for the last time. Its voyage at an end. When Hurley landed the final space shuttle flight in 2011, America's ability to launch its own astronauts into space was history. It's certainly an honor to be part of it, uh, you know, be part of the end of the shuttle program and the start of this program and uh, just want to do our best to, to be successful on this mission because there's just been so many people that have worked, you know, worked so hard uh, to get us to this point. The U.S. could only get a ride to the International Space Station from Russia, which keeps raising the price of a single ticket, now nearly $90 million. But this time, Hurley and Behnken are trading Russian capsules for a modern ride, polished interiors, high-tech seats, and touchscreen controls. The way that, you know, the technology has, has developed uh, since Apollo, since the 50 years that, that, that it has evolved, all those things are obviously state-of-the-art relative to even what we flew on shuttle. What hasn't changed is that spaceflight is risky. It was over in an unbelievable microsecond. The flames enveloped Apollo 1. The crewmen never had a chance. Over the decades, great achievements came with great tragedy. Challenger, go with throttle up. Go with throttle up, and then it happened. SpaceX has had its own setbacks, though none of them fatal. In 2016, another rocket blew up on the pad. Then, just over a year ago, an explosion destroyed an empty SpaceX Dragon capsule, just like the one that will carry Behnken and Hurley. The Challenger disaster halted shuttle launches for nearly three years. But experts say unlike governments, private companies like SpaceX can work quickly to get back on track, free of too much government red tape. With astronauts, the commercial thing used to be a bad word because they really wanted the government to have, you know, shook everything up 18 times to make sure it works. Now they're realizing that, you know, the private sector with its continuous improvement and stuff um, has some newer ideas. SpaceX lost a capsule that was supposed to carry these guys last year. Look how fast they fixed it because it was designed like any commercial product, which these things are, to be fixed because you need to sell these things and you're not going to sell something that doesn't work. SpaceX is poised to beat one competitor with a century of aerospace experience, Boeing. 
Last December, Boeing's Starliner was launched on a test flight. It was supposed to dock at the International Space Station, but a technical glitch forced the mission to be called off. Boeing says before Starliner carries any astronauts, it'll get another test flight. And experts say SpaceX will get bragging rights. Now there's a competition. Boeing's, you know, may lose this capture the flag thing. And I don't think they like that. And I think they're probably going to get more creative, which is a good thing. Elon Musk isn't the only billionaire looking skyward. Amazon founder Jeff Bezos has Blue Origin. The company is developing a moon lander, but first hopes to offer rides to tourists. Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic is selling tickets to space and says demand is sky high. The cost of going weightless, a quarter of a million dollars. But on Monday, his other company, Virgin Orbit, launched a rocket from a 747 designed to send small satellites into Earth orbit. It failed. Aerospace giant Lockheed Martin is looking beyond Earth orbit, building and testing a new long-range vehicle called Orion. One of the keys to success in spaceflight is to test, test, and test some more. And that's what they do in this giant building here at Lockheed Martin, just outside of Denver. One of the things they can do is blast this spacecraft with sound waves to simulate the violent vibrations of a launch. They'll also test every single system. They want to make sure that if something goes wrong, it happens in here and not out there. Orion seats up to four in a capsule design that's a throwback to the 1960s. On top here. Yeah, so way up in the top, you'll see what looks like a cone. A lot of folks will recognize that it looks like Apollo, and the answer is, yeah, it's a capsule, and that's because capsule, and that's because physics hasn't changed. And uh, capsules more, are still the best. Capsules are still the best. Um, the more we run our simulations, the more we realize um, those folks with the slide rules and the chalk on the chalkboard were right. Orion is part of NASA's Artemis program, launched into space on the biggest rocket ever, called SLS. The mission? To fly astronauts, including the first women, to the moon by 2024. In difficult times like today, um, it's really important to be thinking about um, where we're going to proceed as the, the human race. The compelling aspect of understanding who we are, where did we come from, and where are we going, and most importantly, are we alone? Those questions exist in outer space. For travel beyond Earth, NASA plans to use an orbiting outpost called Gateway. This is a concept for where the astronauts would live and work mm -hmm. during the time that they're orbiting around the moon. And why do you need it, though? Why not just fly from Earth, land on the moon, and do your thing? Yeah, um, because this allows us to go anywhere on the moon. So the, the um, gateway is actually mobile, so we can move it to other locations around the moon, so you could explore other pieces. If you go direct to the moon, you're going to a direct um, location, uh -huh. the South Pole, the equator, whatever. This allows you to do that, come back up here, collect and do some science with what you've collected, and then maybe move to a different location and then do some more. Think of it as a pit stop in deep space. Can you show us around? Yeah, yeah. So um, we have areas here like a, um, a birthing area where people would um, rest or sleep. So yeah. if you looked up, you can see this is a treadmill for astronauts to be doing their exercise on. you got a treadmill sort of on the ceiling here, but it could be anywhere. Yeah. yeah. They're going to do a lot of experiments with growing food. As we move to places like Mars, you're not going to have the logistics to be constantly bringing food to the mm -hmm. astronauts there. So they're going to have to be sustainable on their own. Before humans go to Mars, which is planned for the mid-2030s, robot explorers will go first. The Perseverance rover is set to launch this summer. Part of its mission is to collect rock samples that for the first time will eventually be taken back to Earth. In January, we suited up to take a closer look at the mission inside the clean room at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. We've had to put on all of this protective gear so that uh, hair, oil, makeup doesn't contaminate any of the spacecraft that they are assembling here. In fact, the air in this room gets cycled out 70 times every hour. You're not going to find cleaner air probably anywhere in Southern California. Why is 2020 the year that everybody wants to go to Mars? Earth and Mars are in different orbits, and so once every two years they align so that we can actually get there in an efficient way. And so and then this rover in particular is going to collect samples that we want to bring back to Earth someday and look for signs of past and present life. And so in order to do that properly, we want to make sure that we, we, the Earthlings, are not inside the sample tubes. And so we have to do things like be in a clean room and wear all of this protective gear to make sure that we don't contaminate the spacecraft and the instruments. 
Perseverance will have company, a first of its kind Mars helicopter. So we have two cameras on board. There are kinds of terrain, uh, steep terrain, cliffs, uh, you know, going over tough sand dunes. Those are the kinds of places that we can reach that uh, no rover could ever get to. Space exploration is more global than ever. This year, China is planning an unmanned mission to the Red Planet and also wants to collect rocks on the moon and fly them back to Earth. India is also launching a moon lander. And the United Arab Emirates will send a probe to study the Martian atmosphere. Yeah, in the last um, decade, we've doubled the number of space agencies that are out there. Almost every country is now creating their own space agency. Even the United States last year creating another space agency. Uh, space is going to be, uh, it's going to be the future, both in terms of defense and offense and so many other things. And already, from what I'm hearing and based on reports, we're now the leader in space. A new branch of the military called Space Force. And liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket with USSF-7 for the United States Space Force on a mission dedicated to America Strong. Space Force launched a secretive military plane earlier this month. Billionaires aside, space exploration depends on political will and lots of money, suddenly tighter in the age of a pandemic. Engineers say they're ready to build on the accomplishments and failures of the past, using new ideas and new technology to help take our biggest leap yet. Space is an inspiration, right? Coming out of this pandemic, this country, this world, needs an inspiration, right? We need something to look forward to. And, and I, I think we need this right now more than ever. Our thanks to Clayton. Streaming coverage on ABC News Live and Nat Geo will begin tomorrow at 3 p.m. Be sure to stick with us as we bring you, weather permitting, that historic launch. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.